G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. In today's video, just when you thought we were done with all the trade period content, I've thought of something else that was quite an interesting topic, taking a look at some of the AFL trades in the past that got very close to happening, but never actually did. Some of the names on this list as well are quite high profile names. So you could make an argument that some of these deals not going through actually did kind of shape the course of history afterwards. As I always say guys, if you've been enjoying the content lately, but you haven't yet subscribed, I'd appreciate you do hit subscribe and let's get into the list. The first player on that list is Lance Franklin, who obviously played for Hawthorne for a number of years before exercising his free agency rights to go to the Sydney Swans. But quite a few people may remember that Lance Franklin almost joined GWS at the end of the 2013 season. Before the end of that 2013 season, Franklin, who was in the final year of his contract, came out and announced that he would not begin talks with Hawthorne on a new contract until the end of the season, which is famously a bad sign. Having played nine seasons at Hawthorne, this actually qualified him as a restricted free agent which meant that he could move clubs through free agency but his current side Hawthorne would have the right to match any rival offer. For most of the 2013 season it was widely believed that Franklin was heading to the newest franchise in the league GWS and he'd been offered a six-year 7.2 million dollar contract. However out of nowhere GWS tweeted that they had withdrawn their interest for Lance Franklin because they believed that the Sydney Swans were about to require him. Out of nowhere Franklin would agree to a nine-year 10 million million dollar deal with the Sydney Swans, which he is still undertaking today. Since then, he's played 136 games for the Sydney Swans for 415 goals, and he's played in two losing grand finals in that time, but no premierships. The contract does expire at the end of the 2022 season. It'll be interesting to see if he goes on further, especially when you consider he's probably going to have to take a big pay cut to do so. The next almost trade that we're going to discuss is Travis Spoke, who nearly made his way to the Geelong Footy Club at the end of 2012. Now, Geelong was so keen on luring Boke to their club that they actually took the unusual move of sending Chris Scott as well as Jimmy Partell and Joel Selwood all the way to South Australia to actually meet with Boke. So Boke took that meeting with Geelong during the season and after a tip off from a talk back radio caller the news hit the media which caused a bit of a war of words between the two clubs. Much was said of Geelong's decision to secretly meet with Boke in person. Port Adelaide said they knew of their interest in Boke but didn't know that they were actually going to fly to South Australia to meet him. Geelong defended this move saying they just preferred that to a phone call. In the end, Travis Boke would stay loyal to the Port Adelaide Footy Club and as it stands will go down as one of the club's greatest ever players. He's played 306 career games for them overall and still remains one of their best players in their team. The third player on this list is Peter Matera who almost made his way from the West Coast Eagles to the Melbourne Footy Club in the mid to late 90s. Now being an Eagles legend and hero of the 92 and 94 premierships, Matera flagged an intention to join Melbourne after the 1990 season which caused a media storm in Western Australia. Citing a desire to play more consistent games at the MCG, Matera's announcement would trigger major public outcry and apparently a lot of Eagles players actually went to visit Matera's home which was staked out by the media. However, days after making that announcement, he backflipped on that decision and agreed to sign on with the West Coast Eagles. He would play out the rest of his career at the Eagles, but there is a theory that his form slump in 1998 was largely due to the pressure that he felt as a result of his original decision to leave the West Coast Eagles. Next up, we've got Joe Danaher, who now plays for the Brisbane Lions, but nearly looked for a move from the Essendon Footy Club to the Sydney Swans at the end of 2019. Now, it had been rumoured all year that Joe Danaher was keen to get out of the Essendon Footy Club, keen to get out of Melbourne generally, Though Essendon was very reluctant to buy into that speculation, only confirming late in the trade period that Joe Danaher wanted to get to Sydney. But being a contracted player, Essendon did hold the bargaining power, and unfortunately the two clubs just couldn't come to an agreement on the worth of Joe Danaher. Joe Danaher would play one more season for the Essendon Footy Club before exercising his free agency rights and joining the Brisbane Lions. They may have only got four more games and three goals out of Joe Danaher, but the resultant free agency compensation pick, being pick seven, ultimately was a better deal than they were likely to receive in a trade anyway. So overall, Essendon didn't really lose much by denying him a trade to Sydney and waiting a year. One almost trade that many people may not actually remember was Dustin Martin, who nearly joined the GWS Giants, and it may be because this was before he announced himself as the player that he is today. At the end of the 2013 season, Martin began a highly publicized test of the market in terms of his playing services. Having come out of his second AFL contract with Richmond, he was testing the waters and seeing just how big a contract he could potentially get at another club. To that stage, he 
had rejected all of Richmond's contract offers and on the 13th of September, Richmond issued an announcement saying that Dustin Martin was pursuing contract offers from other clubs. Within a week, Dustin Martin was actually filmed meeting with the GWS Giants and touring their facilities ahead of a potential trade. However, soon after that, the Giants would rule themselves out of the running for Dustin Martin, which subsequently would leave him with very few options other than the Richmond Footy Club. It was reported widely that Martin's motivations were mainly monetary, rejecting the half a million dollars he was offered by the Richmond Footy Club and pushing for something closer to the 600 mark at another club. Reportedly, he met with Essendon quite late in the piece, but despite this, he would ultimately make the decision to remain with Richmond, signing a two-year deal at the end of September. Now, this one is a particularly interesting one to reflect on as a sliding doors moment because if GWS had requested Dustin Martin right at that time, then it's fair to suggest they'd probably have a premiership under their belt at the moment. Equally, if Richmond didn't have Dustin Martin, would they have a single premiership from that era? Who knows? Let me know in the comments. The next almost trade to discuss would be Andrew Gaff, who nearly left the West Coast Eagles at the end of 2018 to join North Melbourne. Now, as it was widely reported, North Melbourne did have a series of massive contracts get rejected by some stars of the competition, including Dustin Martin, Jordan Dugowie, and Josh Kelly. Kelly, but the one that got closest to being done was Andrew Gaff. The Kangaroos reportedly offered Gaff more than $8 million over seven years in late 2018 before he would ultimately decide to re-sign with the West Coast Eagles. Gaff would enjoy his best personal season in 2018, averaging 31 disposals a game to claim the All-Australian wing spot despite missing the last three games of the season. Despite being pretty happy and settled in Perth, Gaff was reportedly seeking a trade home to be closer to family because his father's health had taken a poor downturn. However, what may have been a turning factor in his decision making was his round 19 suspension against the Fremantle Dockers. In a moment of madness, Gaff would punch Brayshaw in the face, breaking his jaw and earning an eight-week suspension that would ultimately see him miss out on his team's premiership that year. Gaff would leave his decision until October of that year before ultimately re-signing with the Eagles, stating that he didn't want to be remembered as a player who left when things got tough. The next almost trade that we have to discuss is Dylan Scheel, who almost joined the Carlton Footy Club instead of Essendon at the end of 2018. In fact, it came down to the last 30 minutes of trade deadline day that it wasn't entirely certain that Shield was going to end up at Essendon and not Carlton. Now, Shield had certainly set out with the intention of joining Essendon, but with the potential trade at a standstill between Essendon and the Giants, Stephen Silvani nearly swooped in and stole Shield out from Dodora's nose. Now, Shield had reportedly chosen Essendon because he believed they were far closer to a premiership than the Carlton Footy Club, but with Essendon refusing to back down on their offer of picks 9 and 34 for Shield, the deal appeared to be at a stalemate and that left the door open for Carlton to swoop in. As you can imagine, this led to a great deal of unease and frustration for Shield, and such was his mindset at the time that he was genuinely considering signing a last minute deal with Carlton or even potentially re-signing with the Giants. As we know, the Dons would eventually get the deal done for Shield with two first rounders going the way of GWS and Shield and a second rounder going back to Essendon. So it's interesting to note that even though Dylan Shield definitely wanted to play for Essendon, Dodoro's stubbornness at the trade table almost cost them Dylan Shield. The next large AFL trade that almost happened was Jonathan Brown from the Brisbane Lions to the Collingwood Footy Club. Now reportedly during 2008 Jonathan Brown had a secret meeting with then coach Michael Malthouse with Brown revealing he was genuinely impressed and that he believes at one point he would end his career in Melbourne. Pies had apparently offered a six million dollar four-year deal back in 2005 which back then was a great deal of money. To quote Brown he says I was really impressed and I thought at that stage I'm going to play for Collingwood. It had nothing to do with Lee Matthews, it had nothing to do with the Brisbane Lions, it was just more the fact that I wouldn't mind experiencing playing for a big club in Melbourne. Collingwood would go on to win the premiership in 2010 with Brown later lamenting that he would have loved to play in another flag. But he insisted that he had no regrets and then he is very proud of being a one club player. Another deal that almost happened a few years ago was Brad Crouch from the Adelaide Crows to join the Gold Coast Suns. Despite the constant speculation throughout 2019, Brad Crouch of course never made it to the Gold Coast Suns list. Crouch had been linked with a move interstate all year and reportedly asked for a six year deal worth just short of $1 million a year. However, the Suns board declined this. It did emerge later on that Crouch and his management had made a renewed offer to the Gold Coast Suns, lowering their asking price. But the Suns, knowing that they would likely have to give up pick one or two in that draft, which would become Raul and Anderson, they decided that that deal wasn't beneficial. It was an interesting dynamic there where Gold Coast Suns list manager Craig Cameron had confirmed the club had not been expecting Brad Crouch to request a trade to the Gold Coast Suns and that they had intended to go with a strategy of going hard in the 2018 and 2019 drafts. The final trade on this list that almost happened would be Tony Lockett who played for the St Kilda Footy Club at the time who nearly joined Richmond. At the end of 1994, Tony Lockett was considered all but certain to leave the Saints and the Tigers were in the box seat with the key forwards management essentially confirming they had agreed
agree to a three-year deal with Richmond. The decision actually made it as far as the newspapers the following day, but Richmond failed to get a deal done with St Kilda. With that deal falling through, having played 183 games for St Kilda, bagging over 900 goals, Lockett turned down offers from Collingwood, Richmond and Carlton, and probably a whole host of other teams to eventually join the struggling Sydney Swans. Lockett would play a further 98 games for the Sydney Footy Club, kicking 462 goals and proving to be a worthwhile acquisition. So there you have it guys, that is 10 big AFL deals that almost happened and some of those deals, in particular the Dustin Martin one, may have had a big impact on history in terms of which teams may have won premierships. Let me know in the comments what are some deals that you remember that didn't get through that I didn't put on this list. Also let me know in the comments, maybe aside from the Dustin Martin one, which of these deals do you think was the most pivotal? As always guys, really appreciate the support. I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.